Breda nu. Running a business can be quite a challenge for anyone. For someone to pick up their bags and start a business in a foreign country is an entirely different challenge. Meet the ambitious expats who chose the city of Breda as the place to kickstart their business. Welcome to Foreign Affairs. A language school which operates out of Breda was set up by a Portuguese woman named Margarita. She first came to the Netherlands at the age of 22. My name is Margarita Fermat. Um, I'm 56 and uh, I come from Portugal, uh, from the, the neighborhood of Porto, which is second city in Portugal, it's in the north. And that's also in Porto where I studied. And I live here in near Breda, in Ramsongsfeer, which is a village uh, between uh, Breda and uh, Horkum. Before she made the move, she finished her studies in the city of Porto. I met my husband um, in Portugal with other friends who we were out and uh, so he was also there on holiday with, uh, with, with a friend. So we met one day and uh, well, we started writing to each other at that time. We didn't have the internet or WhatsApp or whatever, it was really old fashioned letters. Uh, very long letters and we wrote it to each other I think twice, three times a week. So it was a very exciting to wait for a letter. After seeing each other a couple more times throughout Europe, they decided they would get married. So I was quite young when I left. I was, I was 22 when I finished university and um, the same summer, uh, well, I finished my education um, and I got married three weeks later, so I really didn't have time to work in Portugal. So I came to Holland um, that summer and I immediately started to work here. After the initial move, it still took a few years before she ended up in Brabant. We lived first in Delft, because my husband is from uh, near Delft. And after three years, we moved to uh, Brabant because my husband uh, changed uh, jobs. Um, so then we, in 87, we, we, uh, we bought a house in, um, in uh, Ramsongsfeer. And that was more or less the same time also that I started for myself. Then I started freelancing at that time and uh, a little bit later, so I started my business. Moving to the Netherlands at the time came with its own set of challenges. Uh, when I came here, there were not a lot of Portuguese people here. And those who were here were really immigrants working, for instance, in heavy industry. So there were not a lot of students and not a lot of women with a uh, university uh, degree. So sometimes people were a little bit amazed, like, oh, is the, are there universities in Portugal? I said, I was very, yes, there are. <laughs> Actually, even older than the Dutch universities. But that was a little bit of a prejudice that uh, there was. The cultural differences were also noticeable to Margarita. Also for me, the biggest shock I think I remember was going to the supermarket. Um, you know, Latin countries, uh, food um, is a social thing, you know, it's very, very important uh, to sit with friends, to have a good meal, to share uh, a meal with friends. What well, that was not in Holland. Now it is much more. And also, I mean, there were there were not a lot of restaurants. Now you go to Breda, I mean, it's full of restaurants. Uh, young people go out a lot. That was not that like like that back then. Another major difference was the importance of family in Portuguese culture. In Dutch, you have uh, the word uh, gezin, which means um, father, mother, and children. And gezin is something different than family. So you have the gezin and you have the rest of the family. So in Portuguese, we don't have a word for, for that because family is my children, but also my brother, my sister, and grandmother, so everybody. So there's not such a um, uh, straight line between, uh, between the families, uh, you know. According to Margarita, it can be difficult to integrate in the Netherlands because of how Dutch society is built. It is something called verzuiling, which means society in columns. Uh, Dutch people are very tolerant, but everybody is in its own street, let's say. So uh, if you come from another country here and you don't have any contacts, it takes a long time to build up a network. 
she realizes that learning the language is also a key part of integrating. One thing is important is to learn Dutch because a lot of thing, people think, well, in Holland everybody speaks English, so I don't need Dutch. Yes, you do. I think I find it also a question of respect to the culture that you really need to speak Dutch. And at one point, sooner or later, you'll be confronted with the question, why? You don't speak Dutch and you live here for so long, so you think, well, actually, I should. Margarita always had a love for languages, so starting the business here and becoming independent was the most logical choice for her. I did uh, Germanic philology, that's what the name was. That was German, English and Dutch at University of Porto in Portugal, so where I come from. And so that's something that I love. And of course, uh, when I came here, I could develop myself a lot with languages because I had to speak uh, uh, another language. So that was the main reason to stay in contact with, uh, with languages. And of course, I also was trained to be a teacher. So I had also my own idea about how you can teach a language. And of course, I could do it the best way was to do it myself my way with my own philosophy. Starting the business at the age of 30 was both exciting and daunting. At the very beginning of the business, finding customers was a difficult task. We didn't have the internet, which is now is easy. Um, so we, I had to buy at that time lists of uh, companies. You know, so I said something you had to buy. And so you could have to call the clients and ask do you need uh, trainings and what kind of trainings and so on. So that was how you started the business. Nowadays, of course, it's much easier. So you go uh, on the internet and you can look up for interesting companies that you think will need um, language trainings in companies is what we do mostly so uh, you can yeah you can just call them and dutch people are very the dutch companies are very receptive very professional when you call out of the blue asking for for information like do you need some trainings she finds it quite easy to work with dutch clients in particular she noticed some distinct differences in the way business is conducted in the netherlands and portugal and then you start. So uh, that's uh, that's main thing is to to make a small a business plan in my in my branch and um, don't don't be shy. Of course, you cannot be shy if you start a business and uh, if you believe in your qualities. Uh, in my case, as a teacher, in my philosophy of teaching, you, you just start and you can make uh, lesson plans and a lesson program for a company. Yeah, depending, of course, of the language and so on. And then you have, your, of course, your, your teamwork yeah? uh, and your also, um, also the teachers and that work uh, for you. And yeah, you can, uh, that's, how, that's how you can start. Margarita had to take a unique approach to running her business in order to make it efficient. You really have to look for companies who export or import something products and also need uh, or, or that also have in production companies for instance have people from other European countries so for instance to teach Dutch yeah so and then of course export managers and so on uh, they are very important uh, clients for us eh? because they need to um, to learn other languages and that's something that I like a lot here in Holland is compared to other countries. For instance, if a company starts here with a business in Italy or in Spain, the first thing they do is to learn the language. They, uh, Dutch people are trade people. They understand that communication is very important but also cultural differences can be a problem when doing business. Yeah. So they, they, the first thing they do is learn the language and the, and the culture so that we have a bridge to have trade. And that's very important. Other countries don't understand that so much. At the moment, she is satisfied with the current state of her business. She realizes the importance of knowing when to stop expanding the business. 
in this business, you know, lately uh, we actually don't work with, uh, with employees, we work with freelancers. All the teachers are freelancers, that's how, in the network of freelancers. And that is a very, uh, also because of tax issues, you know, um, it's very expensive to have uh, personnel in Holland and also would have a negative effect on, uh, on, uh, on our prices. Margarita's business is running smoothly and she will continue comfortably in the coming years. Next time on Foreign Affairs, we will visit an American woman who helped bring yoga to the Netherlands. <laughs>